try this uh, video again. This is the QRP guys, 20, 30, 40 um, antenna, vertical antenna. This is my fishing pole here. This is only 15 feet and this is a 70, 17 foot radiator. So I had to do, do some modifications here. This is one of those clips that you, uh, it's like a half moon shape, it snaps onto a PVC. It was a little bit too big for this, but I was able to tape it. And um, this is a telescopic, it's like a tripod I found at a thrift store the other day, but it's actually was used to hang IVs on. So I uh, snipped off the, the hooks that were for the IV bags and smoothed them out just instead of taking this all the way out so it would have a little bit of a cap. So I'm gonna set this up and, um, and for the uh, counterpoise, I've got these stakes I'm gonna use just to keep the counterpoise from uh, getting too slack. So let me set this camera up and I'll go in the yard and try to set this thing up so we can see how, how easy it is. And once I get it all set up, I'll probably try to tune the antenna. So that's it, completely set up. All I have to do now is hook up the uh, coax and the uh, uh, and tune it. It's not tuned yet. I'll hook up the uh, coax and we'll get to tuning this thing. Okay, without any any tuning, actually, it's uh, not bad. I uh, set the uh, meter for uh, fourteen dot two megahertz. And the SWR is 1.6 to 1 on 20 meters without any tuning, so that's pretty good. I would say that's pretty good. I don't know if you can see that, but that's, that's not bad at all. I'm pretty happy with that. So let me go show you these switches and uh, we'll see what it looks like on the other bands. I don't know if this is in focus, but... These are the switches, and as you can see, the uh, the uh, top switch here, if in its upper position, or to the depends on how you're looking at this, and the position it's in now is for 30 or 20 meters, and this switch is in 20 meters. So to switch it to 30 meters, you leave that one there, and you move this one down to here. So now, um, theoretically, I should go back and look at the uh, the meter, and it should be fairly close to two point. 2 to 1 for SWR, so let's go check it out. Let me change the frequency to how to do this with one hand 7 and I'll just leave it right there at 7125. Alright, and oh, the SWR on 40 meters is not very cool. Alright, let's just see where it is here. Let's see where it is resonant. You can watch it with me. Okay, so it's way low for 40 meters, which is fine because I have a tuner in my antenna, so I can, you know, I can use the tuner to uh, compensate for that, which is kind of a little bit more. And I don't want to touch it because even though I'd rather be resonant on 40 meters than 30, it's not horrible. I can tune with that. So, what was it again? It was uh, eight. Yeah, see it's way off. You don't want to transmit on that, but it should be able to tune to it, so it keeps falling. <laughs> Let me show you what I did. So wedge these stakes in between these two members here and it's really not going to go anywhere now hopefully not so let's just get on it let me go to 20 meters and we'll go see if i can i'm going to use the auto feature on my radio and we'll go check the reverse beacon frequency here in a minute i've got the icom 703 out here sorry for the glare let me go ahead and why do we put the uh put the 20 mega or 20 meters 
I'm gonna go down to somewhere near the as long as it's quiet. I don't hear anything, so that's a good sign. Let's go in the middle of the band here. The, well, they call these the uh, novice bands, I think. Interesting, I don't hear anything. Alright, so the tuner is not on. And I'm going to see if the. Uh, these are pre programmed things here. I don't have the mic or the, a key attached, so I'm just going to see if the band's clear. I don't hear anything. All right, here we go. And the reason I'm sending this so many times is that actually that was uh, some recommendations on the uh, uh, reverse beacon network to send your call time multiple times so the system actually, the skimmers actually pick it up. All right. So now we will go up to, we're down to the uh, 30 meter band. Okay. All right, I switched it to 30 meters. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and use this frequency right here. We'll just see if it's clear. And we will go ahead and send our test signal. Starting to feel some raindrops, so I won't be in here long. So I'm gonna have to use a tuner on 40 meters. Okay. So let me go down here to. That looks like a good one to me. Let me turn the tuner on. Okay, so it. Did it tune? I turned my LEDs down so it is tuned. It, well, hold on, let me go put on 40 meters first. All right, I switched it to 40 meters and let's try to tune this yet again. All right, so it's on CW and that's the frequency. And it is tuned. So let's try that again. Let's try this into the beacon test signal. Hearing nothing. Let's go ahead and send it. And uh, we'll go in here and uh, check the reverse beacon network and um, we'll see where I'm being heard. I'll even put up a picture on a map of where the signal is reaching. The verticals are typically omnidirectional so they're not the best for this kind of thing but they do work in a pinch and it's small and you can take this anywhere. Alright so that's it. I had to bring my stuff on the porch to set up so that's my, my power set up. And just sitting idle after uh, some tips uh, from another uh, YouTuber. Uh, the radio just sitting idle and receive is only drawing 4,400 milliamps, so that's not bad. And uh, I'll send that QRL again. You can see how much it draws actually when it's uh, transmitting. You see that there? So up to two amps. So interesting enough, uh, the reverse beacon network it only picked up. Uh, the uh, test CQ that I sent on on the 40 meter band which is interesting considering that's the only band that needed to uh, to be tuned using the tuner uh, the other two bands didn't show up at all and I'll show you where these two um, stations uh, picked up my signal so the location of the uh, two skimmers that picked up my signal were in New Hampshire and Massachusetts which kind of makes sense because I was in front of my house probably 20 feet away from the front um, I live in an old old house built in the 40s. It's a uh, brick and it's got plaster walls, so I'm sure that was either acting like a, a reflector or an attenuator for the other directions. But my house faces northeast, so it kind of makes sense why the signal went that way. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's just see what the band conditions look like. Well, the band conditions are horrible. That's part of the problem. But um, anyway, I, the SWR was fine, and it was resonant sort of on the other two bands, the 20 and the 30 meters. So on um, better conditions, I'm sure this would get out. It's, uh, it was a fun kit to build. I think it'll work in the right conditions, and I look forward to uh, getting it out later this year and making some contacts. Uh, 73, everybody.